The cottontail rabbit lives as a member of a community in which many animals, plants, and events affect his life and are affected by him. He is most important to the community as a food supply, for the rabbit is preyed upon by nearly every meat eater that walks, crawls, or flies, including man and his tame predators, dogs and cats. Thus, the story of the rabbit is the story of a community, and a farm community without rabbits is as unthinkable as a meal without bread and butter. The foundation of community life is the soil, basic source of shelter and food for all community members. Good rabbit habitat will support many kinds of wildlife. One community member is the gray fox, primarily a woodland dweller and a good tree climber. He is not after a rabbit now. He is seeking other prey. But catching a tree toad isn't worth risking a fall. The gray fox is really more agile chasing ground dwellers like rabbits or mice. As he walks delicately along the limb, his big plume tail helps maintain balance. The curious weasel is a fearless, efficient predator. At this early spring season, his mottled coat is changing from winter's ermine white to summer's brown. Bold, yet seldom seen, he is a very active member in the community where he feeds in part on rabbits. The red-tailed hawk scans his community from a high perch or patrols from the air lanes. In a nearby nest, the young red tail is growing to maturity. Soon it too will take an active part in community life. It takes a lot of rodents, and now and then a rabbit, to keep this down a youngster growing. The great horned owl is one reason why rabbits and other small creatures must be especially watchful at night, for it is then the owl hunts the food needed by its hungry young. The coyote, another rabbit eater, has his playful moods. In a frolicking fashion, he torments a prairie king snake itself an eater of young rabbits. The snake isn't playful. Low on intelligence, his life is a serious business of getting food and avoiding death. If the coyote were really hungry, he might eat the snake. Groundhogs build more dens than they need. The extra dens provide shelter for rabbits and other animals. In addition to animals, weather is important in the rabbit's life. Rain provides the moisture needed by all life. With the sun, it enables the soil to produce the many plants that furnish food and shelter for the wild community and for man. Flowers, a source of nectar food, are also a promise of the fruit to come. The white-footed mouse eats plants and their seeds and is also prey for the meat eaters, another link between the predator and the plant. Eating can actually increase food supplies. The hawk moth, sipping nectar, carries the fertilizing pollen from blossom to blossom on its long sucking tube. The food chain is often complex. The hawk moth not only fed from the plants but also fertilized them. The moth's young, the caterpillars, eat the plant and in turn become food for young dick sizzles. Feeding on insects is another example of predation. Parasitism is still another way of feeding. Here, wasp larvae parasitize the larva of the moth. Even animal wastes are used as food. Dung beetles, or tumblebugs, work as a team to make a ball of cow dung and roll it away to store as food. There is no waste in nature. A dead sparrow is food for yellow jackets. Given a chance, 
nature produces abundantly. Far more wildlife is produced than is needed for breeding stock. Over all the community is man, whose use of the land has great impact on community life and welfare. A product of man's order and thrift, the Osage Orange Hedgerow is man-made habitat as good or better for wildlife than the plants it replaced. Cottontails find protection, yet room to move about in the tangle beneath thorny limbs. The ripe yellow hedge apples are food for rabbits and other wildlife. Overhead, morning doves find safe nesting sites in the branches, whose sharp thorns keep predators at bay. The rabbit's long ears pick up a disturbing sound. Hedge fences aren't proof against machines. The farmer prefers to use the land occupied by the hedge for growing crops. Cover gone, the rabbit must also go. Thus, a century-old habitat of man's own creation is destroyed by man in a single day. The hedgerow, which once supported abundant wildlife, is gone, and with it vanished a useful wildlife community. If not destroyed, the hedgerow brush piles will still shelter cottontails, but the brush pile alone cannot protect rabbits when they must range far away to find their food. To feed safely, rabbits must find food close to cover. When brush piles are in the open, rabbits can't move far from them in safety. The crowded quarters of the new brush pile favor vermin, such as fleas, which make the rabbit's life miserable. Although cottontails can live close together, sometimes they show irritation with one another especially in early spring, with the mating season near. Most daylight hours, except for short feeding periods, are spent in shelter. Vermin can then be especially annoying. Even healthy rabbits have some parasites. Soft, warm rabbit fur is good flea habitat. Suddenly, the rabbit senses danger. He crouches low. A food hunting coyote seldom passes up isolated bits of cover. A rabbit wise in the ways of coyotes will stay close enough to shelter to make a dive for safety. Other rabbits take alarm, head for cover. The crafty coyote ignores the brush pile and looks for a rabbit out in the open. The coyote drops his careless air as he spots the rabbit. The chase is on. The rabbit, capable of short bursts of speed, frantically seeks shelter. But the hedgerow is gone and wire gives no protection. The predator and not the prey stands to profit from man's enterprise. In open country, speed and artful dodging are of no avail. The coyote herds the rabbit away from cover. Deprived of cover, in which he might have escaped, the rabbit tires quickly. The coyote makes the kill easily. In poor rabbit cover, predators may take most of the rabbits produced. To a farmer who likes a clean farm, brush piles are untidy. The cure for that is no harder than lighting a match. 100 years to grow, one day to bulldoze, one hour to burn. Rabbits are reluctant to leave this last shelter. But as the flames mount higher, they must leave or burn. Behind the smoke, a place once host to a rich community of wildlife is barren of all save man and his own supply of food. 
It is late February. Male rabbits are feeling the mating urge. Compared with males, females are shy and passive. Sensing a female nearby, the male sets out to find her. In typical fashion, the female moves away from her suitor, but not too fast and not too far. Mate selection follows a pattern with chase and counter chase as the rabbits, for once free of caution, engage in carefree, elaborate courtship. Soon, the cares and dangers of family life will begin. Courting done with, the male washes his hands of the whole affair. He'll seek other mates later. Several weeks have passed and purple lamium shows that March is drawing to a close. In the shelter of last year's growth of Ceresia lespedeza, the doe, heavy with young, feeds on new tender bluegrass. She rests often. This will be her first litter, but not her only one. Doe rabbits commonly breed immediately after giving birth and have several litters in one breeding season. Rabbits are food for so many creatures that only heavy production can keep the cottontail going. Even so, good cover is needed so that enough may survive. The female carried the young 28 days and now has them in a nest nearby. She approaches the nest cautiously in a roundabout way to avoid being seen. The nest is a hollow concealed in the grass. It is insulated with fur plucked from the mother's body and covered with fur and grass. Three-day-old rabbits are blind, thin-furred, and helpless. Each is about the size of a man's thumb. Having nursed her young, the doe pauses before covering the nest again. A prairie king snake, just out of hibernation, gets the scent from the open nest. Sensing its presence, the doe dashes over to try to drive it away from the nest. The snake refuses to be bluffed. Discouraged, the doe leaves. Perhaps with her vitality drained by maternal cares and a new litter on the way, she is less concerned with the fate of her firstborn. If the rabbit population were unchecked, it would soon run out of food then many would die and be wasted. But nature tolerates no waste. She uses one product to support another. And though to us nature may often seem cruel, it is by predation that life is sustained. The king snake will eat the whole litter to satisfy his winter's fast. It's late April. A month has passed since the king snake ate the doe's first litter. The doe rests in the sun. She has her second nest. Learning from experience, she has concealed her new nest well. Dry grass cover blends with the surroundings. Only when the mother has removed the covering can the five-day-old young be seen moving in the nest. Their eyes are still closed. Nursing females eat heavily. Lush spring growth supplies nutrients from the soil needed by the doe to produce abundant and nourishing milk for her young. Succulent green foods are especially relished by rabbits. Young cottontails develop quickly. Though still blind at one week, they can wash their own faces and paws. Only five of the six young in this nest are visible. The average litter is four or five. Dandelions are a favorite rabbit food in season. At about 11 days, the young venture out of the nest. 
but only for a short distance and only for a few minutes. Their eyes are now open, but they are still nursing. It will be several days before they're ready to forage for themselves. The fur-lined nest is comfortable after a short outing in the chill spring air. As with rabbits, plants show all stages of growth in early summer. Some are in flower, some with seed, and some just growing up. At about two weeks, the young leave the nest for their first solid meal. This youngster is dining on clover, although the little ones will stay near the nest for a few days and still nurse. They could support themselves now. The young cottontails wander further from the nest, exploring their nearby world as they gain strength and experience. They begin to stretch their growing legs in short runs. After having brought her brood safely to nest leaving age, the doe is thin and worn, but she isn't through yet. She has two more litters to produce during the coming summer. Busybody Blue Jay sees the young rabbits and tells the world. The weasel is aroused by the Blue Jay's noisy clamor and from experience knows it means something is moving about. It might be food. At any rate, it's worth investigating now that he's awake. The jay spots the weasel. Hearing the jay, the doe runs for safety. The doe's alarm is the youngster's signal to hide. Seeking cover, freezing, and running are the rabbit's self-defense. No time to pick and choose. Good cover is too far away. This doesn't look very safe, and it isn't. The weasel has poor eyesight and must verify by scent the movements he sees. One young rabbit doesn't heed the danger warning. Weasels can overcome even full-grown rabbits. However, rabbits are by no means their only prey. As the jay's alarm continues, the terrified doe freezes in her tracks. His hunger satisfied, the weasel returns to his den. A little later, a wandering covey of quail feeds in the vicinity. Unaware of the danger, some of the birds forage around the very entrance. Hearing the birds, the weasel pops out, but full of rabbit, he decides against pursuing the more elusive quail. A hungry weasel will take whatever he can catch. The loss of the rabbit is a gain for the quail and the covey goes on unmolested. A mid-May morning finds the doe in Ladino clover near a multiflora rose fence. Ladino clover, next to this modern fence's thorny cover, makes good homes for rabbits, and the young enjoy the nutritious food in safety. A rabbit's home range is very small. It seldom exceeds five acres. Good rabbit range means food and cover close together. It takes good soil either naturally fertile or soil well fertilized to produce good food and cover. A knockdown Osage hedge next to a soybean field is also good cottontail habitat. Soybeans are good wildlife food. 
But here the diet of rabbits and of groundhogs may conflict with man's interests, but only when the animals are numerous and other foods are scarce. Other wildlife use this field too. This early morning, it is a battleground for two cock quail competing for a mate. They are so absorbed, they ignore the rabbit and forget to use their wings. Need for minerals drives this young rabbit to eat the soil itself. In fertile soil, the plants eaten carry the minerals needed for nutrition. The young rabbits would still nurse, but the doe will have none of it. This youngster is denied a meal. As the season advances, ripening crops bring on the time of harvest. Cutting of grain and of hay fields is especially destructive to rabbits. Many farmers, knowing this, leave field edges unmowed. When most of the hay cover has been cut, the female rabbit runs for the safety of the border strip. In the field uncovered by mowing, her nest of young is exposed to roving predators. In the open, they are helpless. Not all predators are wild. Domestic animals like cats take their toll along with the wild creatures, especially when predation is so convenient. But naturally, man must harvest his crops. As the uncut area shrinks, half-grown rabbits dash over the cut swaths. A running rabbit is a temptation to any dog. This rabbit finds the fallen hay heavy going and the dog easily runs it down. Such predation can be prevented by tying dogs up during mowing. Hay fields attract many kinds of wildlife. The cutting blade and the sudden removal of cover can cause great losses. Leaving some patches of hay unmowed can reduce these losses now and provide winter cover later. An unmowed draw in a wheat field offers protection too. By late summer, the doe has her fourth litter. She has born 18 young, typical production for the average cottontail. In addition, some early born young may breed in their first summer. This seems like heavy production, but normally about half of the young are lost before they're able to care for themselves, and many of the rest will be lost before they are grown. Rainstorms and floods are a danger all through the nesting period, especially if the nest is in a low, poorly drained spot. Even adult rabbits avoid rain if possible. The young, confined to a hole in the ground, are especially vulnerable to a heavy rain. They try to leave, but some are too young to get out and drown in the nest. Nests protected from direct rain may not be safe from runoff. Water and silt together fill low-lying nests, drowning the young. In a very hard rain, the runoff may produce flash floods. Little rabbits can't run fast. Backwaters of sudden floods may catch them, even if they have left the nest. Rabbits can swim short distances, and can reach safety if high ground is nearby. Flood losses can be reduced by leaving good nesting cover and feeding areas above floodlands. In summer, cover is not a limiting factor. It will be later on. Even after the third mowing, alfalfa fields provide some cover and abundant food. Korean Lespedeza is a little short for really good cover, but fence rows, brush, briars, and tall weeds and grass offer good protection. Rabbits will be found here all year. 
From a high perch, a red-tailed hawk hungrily scans the community. A rabbit is easily spotted by the hawk's keen eyes. But the rabbit is alert. The flicker of movement as the hawk takes off catches his eye. The red-tailed hawk, a slow flyer, climbs for height to make his attack. The cottontail dives into the multiflora fence and its thorns baffle the hawk. A cornfield's edge offers good cover. Cottontails also like the little used roads this time of year. When undisturbed, rabbits come out of cover to play in the shade or lie in the dusty road. Dusting helps rid the fur of vermin. This much preyed upon animal has many protective devices. His bulging eyes permit him to see behind as well as to the front and sides. His big movable ears adjust for directional sound. But rabbit ears also harbor parasites like blood-sucking ticks. Rabbits are infested by several kinds of ticks, some of which spread tularemia and other diseases. Predator-like, ticks lurk on vegetation where they wait for a likely victim to come by. In moving around, rabbits brush against the plants and the ticks transfer to the unsuspecting host. Ticks find a favorable spot, like the ears, where blood is readily available. Once attached, they gorge themselves. This may weaken the rabbit. Female ticks must feed on mammal blood before they can reproduce. A fully gorged tick lays many eggs. The nutritious vegetables in a well-fertilized garden are attractive and tasty to rabbits. To the average gardener, the cottontail is an intruder. But to this boy, the intrusion offers a welcome break in the monotony of garden work and a perfect excuse for a hunt. The rabbit population is at the year's high. Young rabbits are fine eating, and rabbit hunting now means less loss to predators. The slamming door startles the rabbit, but not enough to make him leave the lush garden. It is part of good game management to take the harvest as close to production as practical. Three-fourths of the rabbits born during the summer are gone by early winter. Normally, less than 10% of the annual production is taken by the hunter, and the longer he waits, the fewer rabbits he has to hunt. The boy has harvested the rabbit in good season, just as he will harvest the garden in season. The flaming colors of fall bring new beauty to the community. These bright colors hide a grim warning that it's soon time to face the serious business of winter survival. Remaining cover is further reduced by frost. The loss of cover will continue through the winter months. Soon the weasel's coat will change to the concealing white of winter snow. Now his brown color matches the autumn landscape. The quail find abundant food in the seeds of annual plants that favor cultivated ground. When the leaves fall, hunting will be better for the red tail. A white-footed mouse pauses in his food storing job to groom himself. The young owl, now grown, tolerates the October sun and waits for twilight when he can better see to conduct his search for food. The gray fox sniffs around for scent of food and searches farther afield for his prey. The bright orange of sassafras marks draws and waste areas and cottontails begin to frequent such places which cultivation and harvest have passed by. 
These are the places most likely to have winter cover and food. Rabbits will eat green plants as long as they can find them. Later, they turn to bark and dried vegetation. Cover will soon be gone from the field. Only that in the draw will remain. Wildlife is now concentrated in the cover spared by agriculture and the weather, two chief influences on wildlife habitat. After the tender vegetation is reduced by frost, only the plants with strong stems remain to supply cover and food. Thus, large areas are left without game cover. In many places, the only good cover, like the brush-filled gully, is what man has left, either purposely for wildlife or as a byproduct of farming, or perhaps he just hasn't gotten around to cleaning it up. Heavily overgrown fence rows give rabbits shelter and food. But bare fence rows and bare fields offer no protection for wildlife. A multiflora rose fence helps make up for lack of other cover. Field borders with timothy and bluegrass near fence rows can be very productive of game. A red-tailed hawk watches the landscape for movements. He spots a rabbit feeding on bluegrass in the high Timothy field border. In the wildlife community, rabbits are an important buffer between predators and domestic creatures. The hawk decides to make a try for a tasty dinner. Rabbits are always watchful. And in good cover, a surprise attack is a hawk's only chance. In one jump, the rabbit is safe in the concealment of the high vegetation. Cheated of his prey, the hawk vents his anger on a tree limb. His eight power eyes search the surrounding fields intently and see a white-footed mouse eating in the shelter of the corn shocks. This mouse is safe. But there is a movement in the open as another mouse runs across the bare stubble field. All the hawk needs here is enough speed. With no cover to interfere, the hawk makes the kill with sure aim. By leaving the timothy and bluegrass border for wildlife cover, the farmer not only saved the rabbit, but forced the hawk to turn to a destructive rodent for food. This is one direct benefit of good wildlife cover on a farm, and also a way of turning predation from a destructive force to a useful one. Ceresia is one of the newer bush lespedeses that builds soil and makes good rabbit cover. Bluegrass, a favored rabbit food, often grows beneath Ceresia. A rabbit trail through Ceresia is a good place to set a trap and in this way harvest some of the meat produced by this wildlife pasture. Many rabbits were formerly trapped for sale, but commercialization of the cottontail has been prohibited in most states. Will he or won't he? He seems to have trouble deciding. But curiosity or the smell of the bait is too much. Box trapping is one way of getting rabbit meat and fine meat it is too. But to a boy, the sport of trapping usually outweighs the appeal of the meat that results. Hunting is even more sport than trapping. A brush pile in good cover attracts rabbits and is a logical place to start the hunt. Brush piles in open fields are not complete cottontail habitat, but placed in standing cover they are very useful. 
There they furnish added shelter and protection that few predators can penetrate. A small brush pile doesn't baffle the hunter though. Rabbits can be flushed from its shelter by vigorous tramping. A thoughtful hunter doesn't break down the pile, he leaves it intact to shelter another rabbit. A running rabbit is no easy target, even in the open. Even experts miss, but in good cover, there's usually another rabbit. A tangled fence row along a cornfield is a good place to hunt rabbits. Cover near open areas should be hunted thoroughly, for the rabbits sit tight and do not move as freely as they do in more extensive cover. Sometimes they slip along stealthily, just ahead of the hunter. They keep the hunter located. On many farms, good fence row cover makes the difference between a place to hunt and no hunting at all. This is the critical moment of any hunt. It's now or never. A miss and nearby cover have won this rabbit his freedom. The rabbit clinches his escape by seeking the security of an empty groundhog den. Cerecia lespedeza, sown in a draw near wheat, provides a good cover and food combination. Sown on wasteland, Cerecia controls sprouts and erosion, enriches the soil, and helps produce wildlife. A briar patch in Cerecia gives added protection to rabbits. The thorns discourage predators, and here rabbits like to sun themselves. Briars and other thorny growths discourage many hunters, but not a husky farm boy. Disturbed, the rabbit heads for the thicker Cerecia cover. Occasional openings in heavy cover offer a chance for a shot at a running rabbit. Hunting is not only good sport, it is also an important part of rabbit management. A plump two to two and a half pound rabbit is fine eating. Two rabbits are enough for now. When more are wanted, there'll be another hunt. A good Cerecia patch can hardly be over hunted. It takes good soil to yield good crops, whether they're grain or wildlife. To the farmer, there's something satisfying in knowing that the sport and the end product, the meat, came from his own land. Heavy snow brings great changes to the lives of the community. It sifts into all but the most dense vegetation and covers up food. Now wildlife must adapt itself to a different way of living. Rabbits are sensitive to weather changes. Rabbit fur isn't waterproof. Damp snow may cause wetting and chilling, so the rabbit seeks the best cover he can find. Falling snow further reduces the concealing ability of vegetation. The best cover is none too good in winter on the average farm. Snow clearly shows what is cover and what is not. The little cover patch in the far draw might support a rabbit or two, but no more, and not for very long. A rabbit form is a hollow in and beneath vegetation where the rabbit crouches. His fur, the snow, and the vegetation all act as insulation. As the storm lets up, a rabbit living in a weedy corner of the cornfield seeks a high-energy food, waste corn, or corn purposely left for wildlife. A few ears of corn can make a big difference to wildlife when snow is deep. 
By dusk, the storm has ceased, and rabbits will come out of their forms into the winter moonlight. At first, they pause and look around for possible danger. They stand out clearly against the white snow. But there is something about moonlight and snow that makes rabbits want to play. Losing all caution, they leap and frolic in the fluffy whiteness. A white-footed mouse plays too, scampering from shadow to shadow. The weasel, ermine coat nearly complete, comes out after the storm to forage in the moonlight. Moonlight is made for the great horned owl. This is when he hunts the best. His sensitive eyes easily detect animals in the dim light. This rabbit, sick or chilled, makes little effort to hide. The watchful owl spots the rabbit against the snow. His approach is as silent as drifting smoke. In taking this rabbit, the owl has removed the chance that the sick animal might infect healthy ones. Sick or inferior wildlife is the most easily caught. The more vigorous creatures survive and are the best breeding stock. These are beneficial aspects of predation to community life. A rabbit's problem of survival continues in daylight. In deep snow, rabbits look for the heaviest cover. Sumac standing above the snow is used for food. The fox hunts the patches of cover outlined by the snow. But the alert rabbit sees the fox and moves into deeper cover. The fox, a leading consumer of cottontails, hunts for a favorite food. His keen, accurate sense of smell quickly pinpoints the rabbit's location. The rabbit is flushed. It's a fast game of fox against rabbit. But in cover like this, Predators come out on the losing end of the score. In Tangle Ceresia, a rabbit can escape even the swift and agile fox. The rabbit is safe. The fox has given up the chase. A period of thawing weather clears most of the snow from ground and vegetation and sets up good hunting conditions. The rabbits move about more freely. One way in which the city man is brought into the rural community is through mutual interest in rabbit hunting. When the farmer and the townsman are both interested in dogs, the tie is even closer. The firmest tie of all results when sportsmen and farmers work together to develop good hunting grounds like these. Hunting rabbits with beagle hounds is a traditional sport that is gaining popularity. Beagles work slowly and thoroughly, seldom chase the rabbit out of his home range. They have not yet picked up fresh rabbit scent, but in such cover the dogs will soon strike a trail. Now they've got it. The rabbit, hearing the baying of the hounds, takes his time about moving. He really isn't alarmed yet, as the dogs are still working slowly. Now, sure of the trail, the dogs pick up speed, 
the whole pack in full cry. This is the music that quickens the pulse of the hunters. The rabbit's pulse quickens too, and so does his pace. The rabbit lays an erratic course, and the dogs must check at every turn to unravel the trail. When the dogs drive faster, the rabbit must run faster, and in doing so, lays a straighter course. The straighter trail, in turn, can be followed still faster by the dogs. If the dogs can keep crowding the rabbit, he is likely to dash through openings instead of staying under cover. It is then an alert hunter gets a chance to score. Ben sees the rabbit as it covers the ground in long, powerful leaps. He runs a few steps to get a better view. A little more lead next time, Ben. What? No shell? Happens to all of us, Ben. The rabbit gets away, and he keeps on going. Only a healthy rabbit could run like this. Well, after all, the real fun is in having good dogs and a good chase. Good cover that supports enough rabbits for good hunting is rarely overshot. Such cover produces both sport and meat, and the farm itself is improved by having waste areas in soil building cover like Ceresia. Cottontails are also a desirable product of the land. They serve the farmer as a buffer between predators and domestic creatures. Another fast chase is on. Look at Bunny Go. Not an easy target, Mac. Now it's Ben's turn again. He scores. The dogs come up and verify the kill. Their job is done. The trophy belongs to the hunter. So the rabbit plays his part in the community, mainly as a food supply for other wildlife and for man and he stands between man's domestic creatures and predators, which in turn keep the rabbit in check. Thus, from birth to maturity, day after day, all year round, the cottontail gives protection and food and sport to those men who still like to take some of their meat from the open. To preserve these values, man must build and conserve those things that make for a rich and varied wildlife community attractive food and cover, which can also benefit farming and the land is all that is needed. Nature with her abundant production will do the rest. And man, as always, will profit from nature's abundance. May there always be dogs to hunt with and cottontails for them to run. <laughs>